friends, how are you doing? I'm making a short video for you today on some tips that I wanted to share with you on buying synthesizers. Now, as you know, I have a, yeah, like a pretty uh, solid choice of synthesizers in my studio, but by no means these are uh, all the synthesizers that I've ever had my fingers on. Um, let me show you um, maybe a little bit of some of the things that I've checked out in the past and explain to you why it was important for me actually coming to the point that I know, know now know how I should choose synthesizers. So, for example, I used to have um, a, a Tom Oberheim uh, reissue of the SEM, you know, the Mighty SEM patch panel version. Just grab a, a camera over here. And that got replaced with this guy, uh, the Telemark from Analog Solutions that I've actually featured uh, in, in some other videos already in the past. So the reason why that happened is because the um, Oberheim felt like the envelopes were slower, like I couldn't do the things that I wanted to do with it from a sort of percussive bass point of view. It had an amazing growl and it was really nice uh, for it to, for certain sounds, but I couldn't do everything I wanted from a sort of monophonic bass monster and it's pretty expensive for what it is and you know for just those functions I felt like it, it wasn't enough. I've also owned the Moog Subsequent 37 and as, as capable a synth as it is, I had to let it go because I barely ever used it, which is actually kind of the thing that really made me realize Besides what a synth can do, what's actually more important is if you love the way it sounds, if you love its tonal character. Um, I'd rather have a synth with quite simple functions but I love its general sound than a synth that can do anything but I'm not really touched by its sound and unfortunately that was the case uh, with uh, the Sub 37. Now, you know, I have plenty of Moog synths, like, you know, I love the way the Sub Harmonic sounds, uh, I love the way that the DFAM sounds and I also really really like uh, this guy down here, the Mini Tower, which has incredible deep bass and it's a very simple uh, system and I personally feel, you know, it, it has something in its sound that I actually like better uh, than uh, the subsequent 37. So the reason why I, I want to share with you, uh, you know, kind of my philosophy now on, on buying since um, is because I've spent a hell of a lot of time, uh, you know, owning and then selling all kinds of synths. Like this is just a small selection of, of stuff that I've had. And although some of these are unquestionably great, like the 101 and also the SE1X, etc., um, I ended up letting them go. And and the reason why I think that uh, happened. Hang on a minute. Let me go to something that'll be a bit easier for me on the hands. Yeah, here we go. Um, is because. A, I wasn't touched by the sound that that machine made somehow, not, not to the level of some synthesizers that when I switch them on and I play a note immediately I love it. And actually a, a great example of that is this guy right here. Uh, it's the Synth Pro. And yes, I will do a video someday where I actually show these in, in action, but you know, I want to keep this video a little bit short. Another video that I think has an amazing basic sound is uh, the Verbona Performer. It's, it's just beautiful the way it sounds. Uh, yeah, and, and the Grey Mini from Behringer, I think it sounds really, really cool. I love it. It has great, great sound for bass. And then this guy here also, the, the Oberheim Matrix 1000, which I, I heard it at a friend's house and I immediately started digging for one and got one. Because they're still pretty cheap. It's a fully analog polyphonic. You need like a little controller box with it, something like that, from a stereo ping with which you can then um, control it and, and tune it. But uh, I digress. Um, so what, what I wanted to say originally is that the synths that I now have in my studio are all synths that I absolutely love the general sound of, like, like it's nothing that I have to think about, like if I switch it on and I kind of know what kind of sound I'm looking for, I know exactly which one I need to go for. Um, and. As soon as I play a note, I'm inspired and I just go, wow, that's that's such a great sound. A little bit of reverb, a little bit of delay. Okay, that's amazing. I love it. Let's record next sound. And my advice to you would be try to find synthesizers, try to bring synthesizers into your studio primarily based on that criterion. Do I love the sound of it? 
Now ideally of course you have a shop where you could test them. If that's not the case then YouTube's not bad. Uh, for example I heard the MFP Synth Pro on a demo or two and I was like my god. Uh, I think it was uh, Stimming showed it once and then there was one other really well done uh, video on, online and I was like god what a sound I have to have it and I haven't regretted it since then. It's a beautiful sounding synth. It's had actually in this track I can finally show you actually <laughs> one of the synths that I've been talking about now. Um, the track that I'm uh, using as background music here. Let me put it on for you properly and let me show you what that thing sounds like and why I think it's just, it has its own vibe and it's so amazing. So, it's this guy right here. Let me sell it for you. I don't know what it is about this synth and that sound. Oh, you know, it's character. But just, just when I hear it, it gives me goosebumps. Stimming called it the techno organ, which is the techno organ, which I think is a really great description of it. But yeah, I just love it. It just, it has a vibe that it's quite uncommon for synthesizers, as far as I've heard. And like, I've never gotten a sound like that from a Nordic, for example. You know, it's like. I, mean, I don't want to compare one is better than the other or anything like that, but that immediately touched me when I heard it on the demos. Um, so I got it kind of blind and I wasn't able to test one. Um, so what I'm, what I'm saying is find synths which inspire you to create great lines and great music, you know, that, that's the key and function second. Sure, it's great to have, you know, a million functions like the, the, the Oberheim Matrix 1000 Matrix. It has like a ridiculous modulation matrix. I never use it. I love its basic sound. You know, the Axis Virus C, for example, or the TI it can do anything, but I don't like its basic sound. It really gets on my nerves if I have to listen to a virus sound. I kind of get a crisis. Um, same with the Juno 106. It's like a revered vintage synth and it's really cool for what it does in the time that it exists. In, but literally if I hear one chord out of it I just it's like I'm allergic to it maybe I heard it too much because I used to own it which is very different to the Juno 60 which I actually do really like so I guess this is a very very personal thing but I would say that you know if you if you're looking for a new synth make sure you can try it don't buy a synth just because everyone else has it or because it can do so much or you've seen certain artists do amazing sounds with it buy a synth because the second you touch a key and you you hear it sound you go wow and if you're in a shop you're going to be able to try a few different things and trust me you will know that synth when you hit the note um, so yeah my little secret tip for buying synths now obviously there's some practical ones also which is you know buy them cheap and if you have to sell them hopefully don't lose money on them so I very rarely lose money on synths that I buy I keep looking until I find one kind of used cheap everything in my studio is used I don't think I have besides one patch bay I don't think anything here is new uh, th there's probably one or two three exceptions maybe like my headphones and stuff but pretty much everything I buy used so yeah buying used not only great for the environment but great for your wallet and if you look around you can get good deals on stuff and then not lose money if you do have to um, end up selling it again uh, trades is a great way to go trading stuff with people and making sure that it's balanced you know getting a bit of money or giving a bit of money I think is a fantastic way to go people are really open to it also I traded uh, Korg MS20 that I used to own for example for the Vermona Performer which I was really happy about that trade I'd had enough of the MS20 I didn't like its sound anymore so um, yeah Tom how are you going um, and he was super stoked to have the MS20 it was like it <laughs> a dream of his you know so it, it works out great for everyone um, yeah so that's it in a nutshell Sh nice uh, short and sweet video today uh, my thoughts on um, buying and uh, selling since so I hope that this has been useful to you and uh, I'll see you on the next video take care bye bye